Hello, Turkaholics, and welcome back for Football a la Turka Season 2, Episode 11. My name is Kam Bayezid, and I am joined by Umut Nadiri and Jakub Marufolo as our man of the law. is not present today. He had some work-related uh, obligations, and he's going to the States later this week, or the beginning of next, next week, I believe. So some preparation there. Um, and Uzra isn't here either. He was once again on TRT World yesterday. Um, I don't know if we have a video of that up, but he spoke a little bit about the international break, uh, the upcoming matches, I believe, uh, and all that. We'll, we'll see if we can get a video up on that, but for now, you'll have to uh, do uh, with myself, Umut, and Jakub. So, Umut, Jakub, thanks for joining me, for not abandoning me in uh, this, our final uh, episode for uh, before the international break. Hello there. It's my pleasure. And uh, let's uh, start uh, off with the painful stuff. Let's get Europe straight out of the way. Uh, Real Madrid Galatasaray ended in a very painful 6-0 uh, in the Champions League. Um, nothing really changes for Galatasaray with that, though. It'll still come down to uh, them beating Club Brugge. Or, yeah, I think at this point they have to beat Brugge. Um, due to goal differential. Brugge actually lost 1-0 to Paris Saint-Germain despite missing a penalty. And Bayer Diagne, the player all known from Galatasaray, uh, missed that penalty after basically taking the ball away from Brugge captain Hans van Hake. Uh, so a big uh, riot about that in Belgium here. Um, people very, uh, Brugge fans especially, very displeased with uh, Diagne. I believe he was even dropped this weekend for their um, their match in the in the league. Uh, let's move on to the Europa League. Then Besiktas suffered their fourth defeat in the group stages, uh, and they've only had four games, so they are left still on zero points. Losing to Braga this time in Portugal, three to one. This would not be without controversy, however. Um, Besiktas had uh, gone behind early on, but Tyler Boyd had equalized on the half-hour mark. A very well-taken goal by the young U.S. international. Um, Braga took the lead, though, a little bit later. After I think Besiktas should have had a very clear penalty after the goalkeeper from uh, from Braga, Eduardo, made a very clear fall on, on Tyler Boyd, didn't get the ball. But no VAR in Europa League, we have mentioned that before. So no penalty for Besiktas. And then to add insult to injury in the 44th minute, Jermaine Lenz got a direct red card. Probably one of the most ludicrous red cards I've seen uh, in a recent time. Uh, although the, the red card that Andreas Becke got against Dynamo Kiev was probably even worse. Um, so yeah, Besiktas down to 10 men, and then late in the second half, Braga find a third goal, um, and Besiktas got close a couple of times to the equalizer, even with 10 men, but, uh, another loss for Besiktas, and, uh, another, yeah, poor performance from a, a referee in the Europa League, I, I don't really understand if they are not using VAR, why use referees from Estonia and Latvia and <laughs> all these, yeah. Uh, very low FIFA ranked uh, countries, which 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 have very low level leagues, and, and you see it in, in in yeah. The proof is in the pudding in terms of the performances of the of these uh, refs. Uh, guys, what did you think of the red card for Jeremy and Lance? Absolute bullshit. I didn't. When I saw it live, I didn't think it was a red. And when you see the replay and everything is slowed down, you definitely don't see it as a red. Um, so it was a horrible decision, and VAR needs to be implemented yeah. uh, in in every in pretty much every Europa game. Yeah, I fully agree with that. Uh, Umut, uh, what did you think of the red? I couldn't catch the game, to be honest. Uh, uh, I was busy with my lectures and stuff. You lazy uh, git. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you know my feeling about red cards and penalties, but definitely red cards in 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 doesn't matter in, whether it's in the league or in the Europa League. Um, but you know what? I mean, if you have that safety net of the of the of VAR, then it's probably even more so. But you need to be 100% sure as a referee before you pull that card. And this was... I mean, I don't know. Referee clearly was out of position. Otherwise, you don't give this. I, I don't really understand it. 
he didn't even i mean he he didn't even make contact with the studs or anything like he pulled his le- his feet back he, there, there was no uh, real yeah injury issue it, it, at best a yellow at worst a yellow i don't know how to put that i think but even a yellow would have been harsh here i feel like and and i watched it right now and feel like the similar kind of red given to Wellington uh, as a tackle to Arda Turan like uh, three weeks or four weeks ago. Uh, an opposition player uh, against Basakshir taking a red similar manner. And this is never a red. And after what Isaac Saki did this week mm. and not given, uh, this is horrendous. Yeah, but at least... Uh, th- we, yeah, the worst thing is in the Turkish league you even have to have far. So, but here, I mean, I, f- I yeah, I, I find it hard to blame. He even refs pulled because, his leg. Yeah, he did. Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, but I, I, I'm saying uh, I, I I find it hard to blame refs in certain positions. But I think here in these times, these sorts of circumstances, you need to be 100 percent sure. And if this referee was 100 percent sure, okay, fine. Um, I hope he watched it back after and and and. Know that knew that he was wrong, but yeah, you can't really buy anything with that. Of course, the Bishlish remain on on nil points. Um, then over to the next one, Krasnodar Trabzonspor. This match ended three to one. Trabzonspor got a late consolation goal in the fourth minute of added time through Anthony Nwakaeme, but it was never really a, a contest. Trabzonspor rested quite a few uh, key players, I believe, for the the league match. And at this point, uh, I completely understand why they would do so. Uh, the league is obviously much more important for them at this point, and and um, yeah, European qualification for the next round is is pretty much out of the question for them. Uh, anything to add on this one, uh, Jakub? Um, I actually quite like the squad. Um, I, I, I I like that uh, that we finally saw the key uh, young players that we have in the squad, that they finally have some minutes. Um, I can't wait for the Turkish Cup to start so we can um, play play the youngsters a little bit more. Um, as for the game, not really much to add, to be honest. Uh, the, the, the stadium... Uh, was a really nice stadium with the LEDs. It's a really nice stadium. Um, it's unfortunate to see Fernandez, a player that I really liked when he played in Turkey, <laughs> scored two goals against us. And um, yeah, when he the, when the, he wants to be, he's a beast. Yeah, he, his second goal was really amazing. Um, but otherwise, I I, I re- like there's one there's one one uh, uh, shining uh, shining beacon in this game, and it was Ahmed Jambas. I really like how we tried to be um, the the Sosa of the team. So you got say, him from you know? uh, from Germany from Merle Bremen last year, I think, right? Yeah, we got. Or was him, it we this summer? This, we got him this year. Okay, and, I remember um, him because uh, Besiktas were after him as well, like last year or the year before. So yeah, took and he, was pretty, he was pretty cheap. We got him like for one hundred twenty five thousand euros, mm-hmm. and it it was nice to see him play a little bit more. You know, because in the league you can't uh, afford to play him uh, because uh, the midfield is pretty much. Um, the same every week. Yeah, not when so you're in we, the title race, uh, you yeah, probably yeah. want to. Yeah. And he really showed his worth. You know, he he showed that he can uh, be the player that uh, that that people think of him to be. And um, I really liked Audijers this game. I I I do hear a lot uh, from Turkish uh, from Trabzonspor fans that they are pretty much done with him. But he played the he he pretty much played the best game he he, he could have played until until now. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was pretty much his best game in in a troubles for jersey and um i'm hearing i'm hearing news about him probably leaving in the in the winter break and i'm not so sure about that if that's a good choice or not I, I, you, I mean i don't i hope you don't mind me interjecting but i think he is one of those perfect examples of a player that you need to loan out with a guarantee of playing time um i think if you get that guy into into the netherlands if you could get him like to a willem to or something uh, I think it's the type of player that could really blossom and you, know, you could get something out of. I mean, you could... I was just thinking about this earlier, actually, that Bishta should be doing this, like maybe loaning out a guy, for example, like a Kyle Lauren, but instead of giving away an option to buy, give these guys uh, like a, a certain stake, the club you're, you're loaning him to, give, him a, give them a percentual stake in the player's economical rise, like, for example, 5%, 6 7 8% or something, so that they have motivation to play him you know what i mean um because obviously if you're going to want to get playing guarantees like basically with laren they have uh, guarantees that he'll play a minimum of 20 matches this season but 
uh, th- then you need to put something up in front, uh, you know, against it. Like for example, a free loan. And if you don't play him for X amount of games, you have to pay a loan for your five hundred thousand or whatever. Uh, obviously, five hundred thousand is a lot of money, but um, I think Abdi Jaj is, is the type of player that you could loan out to an Eredivisie team, and that could do really well there. Or maybe even uh, the second division in Holland, like the Jupiler League. There, I think that's a good. Uh, environment for a young attacking player too to to further hone their craft and i don't agree with this turkish mentality of oh look this guy didn't immediately impress this guy didn't immediately uh you know he's a supposed talent but he didn't explode on the scene so let's just get rid of him i think these types of players who are like 22 23 years old can still have a lot of uh, value left down the road maybe they'll never be a first team regular for trabzon sport for Besiktas or whatever but you can still get money out of them if they do well in holland if they do well in belgium you can maybe sell these guys for two three four million rather than um you know having them let go and, and terminating their contract or selling them for a fraction of what you paid or whatever I mean, you gave you gave uh, Willem Twee as a, a, a as an option. That's the that's the team that let him go in in March because of uh, disciplinary problems. You know. Yeah, it's just and, a, just um, an example. But <laughs> yeah, no, no. but um, but we got him also on a weird contract. Uh, the first year that he plays with us is 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 um, yeah. How do you say it? Is uh, is is a normal year, and the the third, the second, third, and the fourth yeah. year are optional years. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so. He doesn't even earn a lot. He earns like, like a quarter of a million a year. So just let him play. Just mm-hmm. keep him on the team. Um, he shows promise, but to get to to to, to boot him away like immediately, he's, he's just 24 years old. I don't think should be uh, should be a you know a smart decision. But um, just um, Europa League, um, unfortunate <laughs> unfortunate game. <laughs> um, good to see that we actually got a goal. Um, I don't have a lot to say, to be honest. I like that Abdurrahim played um, on left back. He seems to um, he, seems, he seems to be uh, the next one uh, in line, and I think he might be um, steamed ready to play for uh, for the A team. Um, otherwise, not a lot to add. Um, I don't see. Uh, it was a horrible campaign, and I can't wait for it to be to to be to end. To be sure, a horrible campaign that could have gone differently, though, with a couple of. You know, um, moments, and I, I feel like that's the same for Bishkek, where they have they're left with n- zero points. But it, it, they could have very easily been on top of the, of this group <laughs> had stuff gone yeah. a little bit more their way. Uh, and I, I think Trabzonspor maybe not top of the group, but could have definitely been in a better position. The Basel game, especially, you know, that's one they could have, maybe should have won. Um, it's it's yeah details right now that decide these things and, and with Trabzonspor having uh, a relatively thin roster um, it's understandable that they're resting some of the key guys uh, and, and that yeah I mean with the injuries that they also have we'll get to that a little bit later too it's just yeah their squad isn't big enough right now but maybe in the summer if they, have a, if they finish well in the league this season do well get some extra money and maybe Champions League money you never know then they can uh, add to that squad yeah, I now agree. Let, let's move over to the last match, and uh, that's uh, Wolfsburger against Bashakir. And for the second straight game, Bashakir get the three points against Wolfsburger. They are still the only Turkish club in Europe right now that have gotten a win, and that makes uh, two wins for them now. They have seven points in their group. I believe they are top of their group, actually, as it currently stands. Obviously, they still have to play both Musha Gladbach and AS Roma. Uh, Roma in. Istanbul and I think Misha Gladbach in Germany, but it looks like Misha Gladbach kind of uh, uh, threw the towel or, or whatever, although they did get a last minute equalizer against Roma, but I think they're focusing a little bit more on the Bundesliga where they're doing really well. Uh, but this match ending 0-3 to and uh, Edin Vischa scored here from the penalty spot in the 73rd minute uh, to put Basakshir 1-0 up and then a brace from Enzo Crivelli in the 84th and 87th minute makes it 3-0 for Basakshir here. So they get the maximum points against the weak brother in this group. Uh, that's 
what you have to do. That's something Besiktas could not do against Slovan Bratislava. So uh, hats off to Bashakshir in that regard, obviously. Getting out of this group will still be very difficult for them, but it's a, it's refreshing to see Bashakshi here not just phone it in in Europe, in the Europa League, um, as they have been doing the past couple of years. So kudos to them for actually trying this time around. And, uh, of course, thank you for the coefficient points, Bashakshi here. We desperately need it with all the other clubs failing as miserably as they are. Let's move over to the Super League, and we're going to do things a little bit differently than our usual format. We're going to uh, go a little bit differently because we don't have our man of the law around. And, you know, we want to get to the international break too, so we may go a little bit quicker over these matches than we usually do. So on Friday, Fenerbahce beat Kasim Pasha 3-2. Goals here coming from Vedat Muric from the penalty spot in the 6th minute before Abdul Khalili equalized in the 37th minute. But in the 44th minute, Vedat Muric scored another penalty, made it 2-1. This penalty was awarded after a VAR decision for a handball. Um, and it was a correct call. I don't think anyone can argue with that. It was a very clear handball in the replay, so I don't think any controversy here. Um, first penalty was also pretty clear to me. I don't think any controversy there either. Um, then Karim Hafez got booked with uh, for descent. I think two yellow cards in the sp span of five seconds or something. Um, because he was protesting. As soon as Muric scored, he went off on the referee and... Yeah... Idiots. I don't know why he's doing that. That's just dumb. Uh, leaving his t team down. They probably could have gotten something from this match if he didn't do that. Because Siam Ben Youssef sc he scored an equalizer in the 56th minute to make it 2-2 from a corner for Kasim Pasha. But then again from a corner, Serdar Aziz made it 3-2 in the 69th minute. He was basically left unmarked just allowed to go into the first post nobody watching him pretty much uh and yeah he heads it in at the near post then Mauricio Isla got sent off with a direct red card in the 72nd minute and again no controversy here a referee Ali Palabiuk somebody who I detest very much actually had a good match uh, in terms of these big decisions in my opinion anything uh, to add gentlemen uh, any position you may be don't agree with? What did you think of the two penalties? Uh, am I right in saying that they were correct calls, or is it somebody uh, thinking otherwise? I thought they uh, they were correct calls. Mm -hmm. um, what what really surprised me? Um, I I'm I'm not a big uh, fan of uh, Fenerbahce, and uh, you know I don't really watch a lot of the games, but um, it, it it really surprised me how easily they are caught on the on the counter and. Um, Kasim Pasha could have maybe gotten a, little, gotten a point, but, um, you know, all in all, Fenerbahce is just clinical and mm -hmm. they were there when they needed to be. Yeah, and Altai made a couple of good saves, I think, yeah. one, one of those counters on Koita. Um, yeah, Fenerbahce, I think we've said it since the beginning of the season, really. Fenerbahce defensively look prone. Galtzrai defensively look prone. Um, Trabzonspor defensively look prone. Besiktas early on defensively looked prone. Recently, they have actually looked pretty sturdy. But, yeah, it's... Defensively, it doesn't seem like we have uh, a Bashakshi here of the last couple of seasons. The Abdu Abdul Avcis Bashakshi who looked so difficult to beat at certain points. Uh, you just felt that as if they got that one goal, they would see it out and they would just, you know, grind out to win. But we don't see that with any of the teams right now, I feel like. Uh, and, and I think that's maybe that, that gives hope to the rivals. Uh, we will get to the standings later, but it's so close after 11 match days. It's, it's crazy. But yeah, let's, uh, let's move over to Saturday against Sterberly, beating Kayseri Spore in a very crucial uh, relegation dogfight type of match here. 2-1 Two -two goals here coming from Ayman Abdenur, an own, own goal in the 14 minutes. And... I wonder if uh, Giovanni Sio's name, name was Radamel Falcao if he would have gotten that goal. Because that was a shot directly at goal, takes a deflection and falls in. Where have we seen that before this season? Um, but yeah, the goal credited to Ayman Abdenur as an own goal for Kayseri Spore. So 1-0 for against Sherbali after 14 minutes. Then the youngest goal scorer in the Turkish Super League history. Emre Demir, 15 years of age, scores in the 71st minute to make it 1-1. He gets on the score sheet for Kayseri Spore. And uh, yeah, Grandpa Adebayor 
can't get on the score sheet, but this young stud certainly can. And a great finish too. Uh, and I believe with that he is the youngest goal scorer in history. And I think he takes that title from Batuan Karadinis. No, Enes no. No, no, Enes. Oh, Enes. No. Okay, right. Enes was a couple of uh, was a, a couple hundred days younger, but he was sixteen. Like and, three right? months or something. Yeah. He yep. even scored at Galatasaray, if you remember. Yeah, it wasn't it a brace? No, he just scored the goal. Oh, yeah. He was just subbed in for the game and mm. scored after he was just like 15 minutes on. Mm. Okay, well, anyway, uh, Bogdan Stanku then clinches the victory in the 81st minute for Genshin Terribly after he had missed uh, a very good opportunity, but Silvio Lung had denied him a couple of minutes before that. But Stanku gets the three points for uh, against Terribly, and that's a very crucial win for them, especially against one of their main rivals for relegation, as we'll get to a little bit later. But Kaiseri Spore are left rock bottom, and against Terribly are clawing slowly but surely, getting closer to the edge of uh, the ravine, so to speak. Uh, they're getting closer to safety, but they are still in the relegation zone. Uh, let's move over to the next match, unless either of you have anything to add on our very young goal scorer, Emre Demir. Uh, but I don't think there's anything else really we're talking about here. I um, think uh, he scored a goal with his left. Is it left footed? If you have any well, clue, it was with his left foot, yes. But I don't know but, if he's left or right footed. Because whenever I hear an Emre, they're always left footed <laughs> in the league. Like every single one of them: Emre Akbaba, Emre Moore, Emre Klunt. Emre, Emre Ashik was right footed, wasn't he? He's a defender. <laughs> well, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Is Emre, uh-huh. Yeah, Emre Klin just left footed. So wait, wait yeah. which Emre do we still have else? Uh, Emre Özkan was uh, left footed too. And, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's a fu- funny coincidence. I don't know yeah, why. It, it does. Yeah. But I, I, I kind of feel even like Emre Turks... Tashdemir. We have Emre Tashdemir. <laughs> but but Turks are often left footed. I feel like no. far more frequently. Yeah, far more frequently than, for example, Belgians or even uh, the Dutch. I would I would I would dare say. I feel I've always find that we have a plethora of choices uh, with left-footed players. Maybe not left backs, but definitely left-footed players. Uh, and also, uh, I would want to tell that Stanku is a great high worker for Genshin Library, and he's been like playing with them ever since he left. I think Order Sport, was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think second so. Second stop after Galatas, right? And I think is kind of resembles uh, uh, Umut Blut kind of play. Uh, yeah, but Umut, uh, I think Umut is a better goal scorer, has proven to be a far better goal scorer than Bogdan Stanku has, wouldn't you say? Uh, but uh, in terms of yeah. style, style of play... Jakub you know? can also tell me he he played for Trabzonspor for the I, I, I don't really agree. Um, Umut is a player that you like to have on your team because he runs, a lo- he, he runs around a lot, mm-hmm. but you can really just tear off your... Yeah, yeah, he is he is I stringy. He that. can he can score twenty goals one season, and then the next season only three goals or something. Like I mean, that. you could you, you could you could give him like uh, like chances that are like one hundred percent just tap it in, and mm-hmm. he won't he won't finish those. But, but he that's will the same with Stanku. Ball, you know? And I think Umut's highs in his career have been higher than Stanku's. Yeah, probably. Anyway. And the thing is, also Umut scored far more important goals. Like he scored against Juventus, Real Madrid, late winners too. Yeah, uh, Schalke. All, well, this is of course a very oh. important goal for Stanko too. But I mean, I, Umut. Uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, they're both. I think you could uh, describe them as journeyman strikers, really, in the Turkish league. And I think Stanko is definitely somebody who's who's left his mark on Turkish football. Not a massive uh, mark or anything like that, but he's been one of those good uh, Anadolu team strikers yeah. that has done good throughout his career. He was good for all the sport. He was uh, quite good and for Gishter, has really. he played? Has he played in this game, uh, in Kapokasi Spur? Sorry? Umut Bulut, has he played for Kaisers? For I don't history? think Umut played. Uh, Adebayor was on the pitch. Uh, I would have to check quickly, but uh, I don't think Umut actually played. Um... Um, oh. He did, he did. He did? Okay, yeah. I didn't see him in this match. But usually he's a lot more involved and he, yeah, he didn't he, really... Uh, he, he, he's, to he's usually been put to, like, side instead of uh, forward uh, these days because, uh, and, like, uh, three days ago I watched a video of Heath McCarman giving an interview, like, doing a mm-hmm. talk with Ur Karakulukcu, and he was telling that Umut never was a striker. 
Like, he's just a well, at, dynamo. At Trabzon, he was uh, more behind the striker, I think, right? Because he, he was playing behind... Hitmet Kerman uh, is telling that... Uh, uh, Hitmet Kerman is telling that he uh, was the first uh, guy who trained with Umut Bulut at Ankara Gücü back in... At Ankara Gücü, he wasn't the striker either, I think. He was more yeah. like a... Uh, center forward type, uh, a little deeper. Um. Yeah, he's claiming that nobody after his Ankara Gigi journey uh, improved Umut Bulut like uh, do a uh, like do some special trainings with him to improve his uh, goal finishing. scoring. Yeah, finishing goal scoring mm -hmm. abilities and etc. Because Hit McCarman was telling that Umut didn't even know how to head the ball at the time when he was... Still doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I knew Jakub was going to come in there with a snide remark. Yeah, but he has some goals after like he wasn't even traveling yeah. yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say that. But maybe it's uh, one of those cases where it's, uh, it's one of those players that really lacks fundamentals. I, I think we have that a lot with Turkish players where yeah. they probably um, came into professional football too late where uh, I often he hear these stories of like for example Jen Gunnan he became a goalkeeper when he was like 16 or 17 or something it is way too late to 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 learn the fundament fundamentals of goalkeeping yeah. and that is that's why Cenk had really good reflexes and could really make some stunning saves but then he would do this the, the dumbest dumbest things dumbest mistakes <laughs> I think fundamental same mistakes. happens to be the uh, fate for Rooster I think yeah, but he to was a lesser extent, I think. He was a striker in the earlier times, like... In yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, but to a lesser extent, I think he had probably had more all-around talent, and, and maybe uh, he also had the advantage of, of the the times being a little bit different still. I think when Jenk was coming into his prime years, much more was expected from a goalkeeper, more footwork was expected when, when Rushtu was in his prime. I, you know, we didn't really speak that much of a, of a, of a sweeper-keeper, but that, that's mm -hmm. something in the last decade or so has become very popular and almost yeah, necessary condition. yeah exactly the you know the, the footballing type of goalkeeper it really started with Fabian Bartes in the early 2000s or late 90s but I think that was, was the one of the main that. one of the main reasons Frank Raycard uh, mm -hmm. like subbed benched Richter Reshbar for Victor Waldez at the time definitely and probably yeah. also his uh, dodginess in the air <laughs> yeah, he, was, he was really bad with uh, Barcelona yeah, but he barely played, though. He barely got a chance, and that's one of those things, a you know, new environment, all that, so maybe he could have done better there, but, I mean, I I don't think we can fall to Rekard for... He, he, he couldn't even have the, like, chance to show himself. Mm. Yeah, he got very little chances, but I think he even... Uh, didn't he write in his book that Rekard basically told him, I'm not going to play you or something? Uh, yeah, because he wasn't he wasn't bought by him. He was mm -hmm. bought by uh, the the guy that was before him. I don't remember off the top of my Van head. Hal? Because, uh, Luxembourg, maybe. No, I don't Van know. Hal. I thought it was Van Gaal, but Van Gaal. Could Van Gaal be. was ninety nine, so I don't think I don't think he was there anymore. I think he was there in nineteen ninety nine. Uh, anyway, we're getting a little bit off track yeah. here. Um, let's see. Uh, wh where were we? Uh, Kaiser Sport against Sterbley. Kaiser yep. against Sterbley. So. Yep. Uh, Can I add one thing before we go, go away from this match? Go ahead, go ahead. The the Kaiser Sport defense is so unbelievably bad <laughs> that I just like it, it. It really baffles me that they only conceded to you know. Hey, like, they should not have let go of Kanabuk. Bad, like ah, I, I'm I'm so happy that I, I that I am not like a big Kaiser Sport fan because otherwise I I would like punch the screen or something, but. How can you be a professional footballer and be so horrible in defense? I just don't get it. Maybe it's a maybe it's a team training thing. Maybe it's a it's a lack of organizational training. I don't know. Uh, I I'm gonna add about the Hikmet Kerman thing again because you know he was the uh, starting uh, coach for this season for mm -hmm. Kaiser Sport mm -hmm. early on, and he was uh, always complaining about the financial crisis being happening at Kaiser's Sport Board and everybody resigned from mm -hmm. the club, even the president, co-president, like the, and the, the guy responsible for the footballing things yeah. and all. And the people around Kaiser Sport, like the squad, 
nobody is happy yeah, because yeah, yeah. nobody is getting paid. And what kind of environment can you be like talking about in this kind of situation? Like, yeah, we saw that with Bishik this last season too. Huh? Players weren't getting paid, and and then that was you see that it it impacts their motivation, their performance. It's yeah. It's so Im- people underestimate that I think, and you know because it's Kaiser Sports stuff like that it goes under the radar. It's not really reported on that much. Uh, people don't really pay attention to it. We just put it down to oh wait maybe their players are bad. But if you look on paper, um, I mean Ayman Abdenur is is a player that was very highly rated in, in Spain just a couple of years ago, and I'm not saying that he uh, is is uh, still at that level. Obviously, he wouldn't be playing in Turkey if uh, if he was. But still, I mean the guy is like what 29 years old and. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you come to Turkey uh, for money. At the end of the day, these types of players come to Turkey for money, and if they don't get paid, then, yeah, they can, of course, walk away, but then they're never going to get their money. So they're probably playing, but begrudgingly so, and not really putting in 100%, and not really focused. And Yeah, that's Turkish football for you. <laughs> yeah. Anything else uh, that uh, Hikmet had to say? Anything interesting? Nah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for that, Umut. It was very, uh, very fun to have those uh, notes in uh, here as well. Uh, let's move over to the next match to uh, the new league leaders. Sivas Spor beat Konya Spor 2 to nil here. The goal scoring only started in the 80th minute when Emre Kilinch fired, fired in a thunderbolt. And I couldn't quite make out if that took... A deflection or not, because it ended up in the top left corner. No, Sadr nails like, to the direct ground. Hit. Well, did it take a deflection or not? No, no, direct, no. like directly into the goal with a swerve. Oh, okay, because I, oh, I, I always when when the when the the commentators go crazy about a long shot, I always want to make sure that it didn't take a deflection because it happens so often that the shot takes a deflection or that it's a shot straight at the goalkeeper in the middle of the goal and they're like, oh. Fantastic, fantastic, unbelievable. And it's a shot like straight through the middle. The goalkeeper should have it. And, you know, they're going out of their out of their uh, minds uh, just praising the, the goal to the heavens. But if this actually went in straight into the top left corner, then it was indeed a phenomenal goal. And, you know, it, it would take that because Serkan was in his element against Serkan Kirintele. He was playing a fantastic match. He made a lot of saves. Um, and then he got beaten again nine minutes later by Hakan Aslan. Again, a shot from distance. Serkan Kirintele, of course, not the tallest goalkeeper. So maybe that's one of his weaknesses, those long shots. Although on that first one, Really nothing he could do. The second one, eh, maybe he could have done a little bit better. I'm not sure. But uh, two long-range efforts from Sivaspor. But at the end of the day, uh, they did create quite a few chances. Serkan made a lot of saves. Uh, Konya Spor did very little in terms of attack. Um, and it, but it really took their red card in the 78 minutes uh, from uh, Levan uh, Schengelia to completely start the downfall for Konya Spor because just two minutes later, of course, Emre would uh, fire in that Thunderbolt and uh, win the game for them. And Sivas Spor with that now move top of the Super League table. Spoilers, of course, with in regards to what Alanya Spor would do this weekend. But they have overtaken Alanya Spor at the top of the table. They have now 21 points from... 11 matches. That's a really decent start of the season for uh, Siva Spor. But um, yeah, we haven't really spent that much time on Siva Spor. They've always kind of just stayed near the top of the table, had a good season start. Um, but not a team we've spoken a lot about. But they have some interesting players. Mustafa Yatabari, of course, Emre Kilinc, who I felt was a little. Um, despite, I think he's the top assister in the league, uh, five or six assists or something, but I, I haven't really felt like he had an amazing season start, but statistically he's been doing well. Um, and then, of course, uh, Mert Hakan, I think he's been having a little bit of a breakout season. He was denied a couple of times here, too. What do you guys think of Sivaspor? Are they going to be able to keep this run going and, and maybe qualify for Europe? Umut, let's start with you. Okay, and... Um... I think it's important that Sivaspor's core elements, the core players, are Turkish. Like, it's quite rare yeah. to see that. Hey, lots of those, not super young Turks, like 24, 25, mid 20s. Yeah, yeah, mid 20s. Like, uh, like all average kind of players, it seems at first, but the harmony between them is like 
phenomenal. Like every game, you see that the like each other helping, and they all have talents. Like Emre Kulinc is a maestro in in that kind of way, and Mustafa Yatabar is the dynamo and the upfield and starting the pressure for the opponents and. Mert Hakan and Hakan as well. Hakan is, the, I think, captain of the team. Hakan Aslan, yeah. Yeah, Hakan Aslan is the captain of the team. And Mert Hakan, like all, uh, not so young, but not all definitely, have the stamina to give the pressure for the opponent and they obviously deliver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good team. Just yeah. a good collective that uh, Riza yeah. Chalambay has put together. And I think it's something he's done throughout his career, really, uh, when he was at smaller clubs. He's always able to put something down, a good organization and stuff. But, of course, at, at, I think at Trabzonspor and at Besiktas, he, yeah, there's higher expectations there. But when he can work with a team like this, like a Siva Spor, he's this isn't the first time he's had a really good season with a, with a club like that. Um, but, yeah, Siva Spor surprisingly at the top of the table. I don't really think that they will be there at the end of the season. Um, they look, yeah, above average, but not thing spectacular. I think Alanya Spor have impressed us more this season, but how, they've dropped a lot of points recently. How will you compare this Sivas Spor to Bülent Uygun Sivas Spor for like 10 years ago? That was with Mehmet Yildiz, right? And yeah, yeah. Was, it's a really great team to watch. Yeah, they were... I think at this point in the season back then, they had like 27 or 24 points or something in like 2008. Um, and, and they had like a couple of really good... See, this is not the first time Siva Spore have been doing really well like this. Like they've been uh, doing that since the mid-2000s, I, I seem to recall, where they've been like doing quite well early on. And, and then, of course, in 2008, 2009, they were the biggest title challenger uh, next to Bishop mm-hmm. Dish. Mm-hmm. Um, but... I honestly don't know. It's been such a long time. I remember Mehmet Yildiz from that team, but who else did they have back then? Balili. Uh, Pini Balili. Uh... Musa. Musa. Küçük. He was. Musa Aydın. He was Musa Aydın. Uh, Hayrettin Yerlikaya. Uh, Hay- ah, yeah. Hayrettin, he was playing for the national team too. And also the time. goalkeeper, Petkovic. Extra ah, extra yeah. I, I only remember him from uh, from Pierre van Hooydonk. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I remember even, him before that too. He even scored but, a goal uh, from that uh, goal kick, you know? Oh. For Trabzon or for For Sivas? Yeah, Sivaspor. He scored a goal in the Super League. Like a few key, one of the few keepers who scored a goal in the Super League. He was also the, like one of those keepers that... He could catch like the most insane mm. goals. He he would catch those, mm. and like the 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 stupidest goals you could have conceded, he would concede those. I, yeah. I really liked him mm. as a goalkeeper, but so infuriating. I I, I always liked those uh, early two uh, thousands those uh, Balkan goalkeepers we had in Turkey. Do you do you remember uh, Milochevsky, the Macedonian yeah. from Alatyaspor? Yeah. yeah, he was. Uh... The Drauko as well. Oh yeah, yeah, with the bald head. I always like. Yeah. Bald go- I love bald goalkeepers. They always stand out. <laughs> Drauko, right? You like Omar and... Chatkit as well? <laughs> oh, I loved Omar Chatkic. You know that man. Uh, I, was I hate him. I, I loved Omar Chatkic. I told you about it. I met him once, and he was so nice. Um, he was such a friendly guy. Uh, with a huge smile on his face, but I have to be careful now what I say because I I believe yeah. he is a politically um, yeah uh, yeah burnt uh, so to speak. <laughs> uh, let's move on to to the next match, uh, Rizespor Spor Antalya Spor, which is uh, quite remarkable, really. Rizespor Spor winning this one one to nil. Mohamed Ab uh, Aberun, sorry, Mohamed Aberun scoring the only goal of the match here in the 25th minute, but in the 54th minute, Tarek Chitin, the replacement goalkeeper for the injured Gökhan Akan, took a red card, and uh, yeah, uh, what can you say, there? he just basically just pushed the attacker outside the box, last man, clean red card, but his replacement, uh, Zafer, who came on, made some really big saves to uh, secure the victory for Rizespor, and from bad to worse, I believe Antalya Spor have sacked Bülent Korkmaz now uh, yeah. after the match. 
Um, one nil loss to Teresa Spore. They, they looked kind of. Not to say a sack, but it's a mutual agreement. I can I can mm. say. Okay, so he won't take a compensation then. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Antalya Spore with that, uh, yeah, losing again, of course, and it's not the first time this season. But the one nil loss. Teresa Spore haven't been too impressive this season. I mean, last season, the second half. They were so good, uh, of course, with Vedat Muric at the helm of it, but Atif Sheshu, who was on uh, the opposite side of the pitch this time. But Atif Sheshu really hasn't been able to put his mark on Antalya Sport this season so far. And, uh, yeah, Mukairu is a player that I think, I, I, you know, I like him. I think he's decent. Uh, had a really good attempt here from a half volley, too. Um, I think Bland Korkmaz likes some kind of pacey strikers, and uh, one of the other... Uh, kind of were in his like previous squad. Was it like uh, the, one of the fast young guys? Uh, I couldn't catch his name. The one who clashed with like uh, Utku Iwakuran at the time. Do you remember him? Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't that? Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I forget his name. Yeah, uh, I think he kind of favors that kind of uh, striker because he's like more into counter attacking threats. What was so. His name? Wasn't that uh, what's his name Al- Almiron or something? No, no, no. I, I don't. I don't remember him, but I know he was fast as hell. And uh. yeah, I think Brent Korkmaz uh, relied on mostly counter-attacking players, and uh, some kind of players he transferred, like applies on to this manner. But he wasn't quite successful right now for Antalya Spor and his defensive uh, errors up to this date is like horrible like too many defensive mistakes every other game mm. you can see from Antalya defensive line and even, he has a very experienced defensive line yeah, with even the Diego, Diego. Angelos, yeah. but maybe those guys are getting a little bit over the hill uh, we don't know uh, there was one moment here where Serdaus can uh, very cheekily uh, to try to get a penalty, but I think that was a very yeah, obvious Sardos dive. Can, like, yeah, that's what you can see from Sardos can, Like The last penalty he took was kind of similar manner, uh, but he was given. I don't know why. Hmm. Uh, sometimes he get the contact. Contact. And, yeah, and just... Uh... <laughs> but here he just flopped, I think. I don't think it, there was even any contact. Uh, red card was pretty obvious too, right? That the goalkeeper was just being a ton. What can you say that uh, these recent red cards to goalkeepers, first Beto, then Sarkan Kurento, then Gökhan, uh, like uh, this Tarek, like all similar kind of events? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the Beto one was. Which one? Oh, yeah. Just the, they both handled it outside the box. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Serkan and, and Serkan was really, really weird. Yeah, dumb. yeah. Uh, it, it Beto, was... yeah. What can you say? But this one was, I think it was kind of a oh sh. He got past me. I'm gonna have to give him a stomp here, and it's probably just one of those fraction of a second, split second decisions, and. He, you know, maybe a little bit under pressure, uh, being the replacement goalkeeper, not being used to having all that pressure on his shoulders because he hasn't gotten a lot but of. But uh... the third keeper act like performed brilliantly afterwards. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I think Tarek won't be getting uh, any yeah, playing minutes. Uh... I can check that he made six saves under his name, Zafar Görgen, nineteen-year-old mm-hmm. reserve goalkeeper for. The uh, Real Great. Sprint. Great I think debut. we'll be seeing him. We'll be seeing him more. Yeah, I mean, depending on how long Gokhan is out, I'm not sure how long he's out for, but he was also removed from the national team squad, of course. Altai uh, Bayendir replaced him, Fenerbahce's goalkeeper, of course, uh, but we'll get to that, to that a little bit later. Um, anything to add, gentlemen, to uh, the Rize Spore, uh, Antalya Spore match? Um, yeah, it's. It, it, it. Uh, the, the the only big thing that annoys me is the fucking angle of the camera in the stadium. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how the, it how the I think it's because the, so the stadium is low. Yeah, but that's because the stadium isn't very high. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Same applies to Alanya Sports Stadium as well. Mm. But you know, I I it, it looks a bit like um, the stadiums here. The Excelsior have like yeah, stadiums yeah, yeah. that are like a little bit into the ground, so the, it's like we are watching it. They're like a giant. 
Hmm. But um, other than that, uh, the keeper Zafer was really, really good. He deserved hmm. a lot of praise for the game. Um, he pretty much saved saved uh, saved Riza Sport because I thought that Antalya Sport were the better team. But, yeah, after um, the red card for sure. Yeah, after the red card for sure. Um, yeah, the, that, all... that contact uh, to Riza Sport right back. Uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Melniak or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, Melniak. Or... Uh, or the other one, Moroziuk. Moroziuk or Melniak? Morozyuk. I always get those two confused. Yeah, yeah, I always do as well. Yeah, Moroziuk got a elbow from uh, Antalya Spor midfielder, mm -hmm. uh, like collapsed on the ground uh, for help, and referee gave, gave nothing. Yeah, we'd see yeah, a couple of more uh, incidents like that. Yeah, yeah, it was, it he was, just it slapped him with his elbow. It was Hamilton, and I, it, it should have been a red, in, in my yeah. opinion. And there was a, there was a position where... Um, the ref gave a free kick, and it mm -hmm. really looked like a penalty to me. But they didn't go to bar. Yeah, 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 yeah. That the was Mozik as well. It. Yeah. Yeah, but I, uh, the rule. What's the rule? I think it it used to be where the fall starts, or the contact starts. Yeah, but I was watching the replay. And I was like, isn't he in the box already? It really by the like time? A penalty to yeah, me. yeah, yeah. It's really weird. Um, yeah, that was weird. Could that you uh, catch that? What can you say about that? I mean, that, if that isn't the box, how how does farm is that? So it it must have been out, right? Because otherwise, it's hard to determine. <laughs> to be honest, because you cannot like blame the ref for this one. Like, mm, no, 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 this yeah. is on VAR. This is what VAR is for. This where they. This what they. Yeah, that's why you need it. That's why you have VAR for it. Yeah, that, I mean, that uh, one where like Enzonzi uh, stamped Tony Cross was the best angle of VAR you could see this season. Like just on the white area of the edge yeah. of the penalty box. Mm -hmm. And I think the lines were considered inside and it was given a penalty afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, similar kind of thing. I tuned, I tuned in uh, in the 14th minute, so I missed uh, the first three goals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 16 minute, I think, actually. No, I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I was like, oh, wait, right. Guts are playing. I'll turn this match on. I had no clue about the scoreline. Turned on the match. I was like, what the? <laughs> no, I felt like you were talking about, oh, it was 2 0 already. Let's it see. Was three. It was let's 3. See. My no, first, no, my, let's see. Let's see if it goes above. Eight. My first reaction was, <laughs> what the hell is going... And I was like, wait, 3-0? This match hasn't been on for 20 minutes. Said, oh my god, this could be a 9. But it didn't happen. Please. <laughs> it didn't happen, damn it. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to the next one, talking about Galatasaray. Gaziantep, Galatasaray, uh, probably the simplest win for Galatasaray all season. Uh, away from home, at least. Um, but one of the simplest win in general, I think. Uh, nil to 2 uh, Goals here coming from Umar Bayram in the 21st minute. Uh, and then Sofian Figuli in the 42nd minute. But right before that, there was kind of a really weird position where there's like a sandwich going on uh, with Omer Bayram too. And I think Omer also got the assist on Figuli's goal. So really, this was Omer's night. Um, so yeah, uh, world beater uh, Omer Bayram. Uh, is he the new hope of uh, <laughs> of, of Galatasaray? Um, yeah, Gaziantep to me looked super... Um, timid not even interested i don't know what it was i mean I've, I've really liked them this season for for the most part uh recent weeks they've kind of shown some signs of slowing down but i really liked them uh, early on the season like the first seven or so matches uh they looked really dangerous they had to have a lot of quick guys up top a uh, very offensive team and i saw nothing of that in this match like they, yeah, they didn't I even can, look interested i can tell about because uh Marius Shumudika uh, plays 3 5 2 uh, during his games and like relies on counter attacking threads, uh, fast players upwards. And this game, Galatasaray also played 3 5 2. And he just, uh, Terim, he just uh, blocked the path of the counter attacking threads by. Did Fatih putting... Terim tactically outclass an op opposition uh, coach? Is that what you're saying, Wood? Yes, I. <laughs> I think no, no, no. The thing is, yeah, uh, he just closed the path of like attackers, like mm -hmm. with three, uh, three big guys, 
uh, like Ahmed, Markel, and Luyen Dama. It was and a very interesting lineup with five or six defenders. Uh, Ahmed Chalik was playing, yeah, so that was very interesting. You, so no, you no, think no. that he, he just pushed the uh, uh, flanks upwards mm -hmm. uh, as uh, like wing backs, but yeah. more like a uh, wing players. Uh, they didn't just uh, come back during the game, and uh, also Emre Tashdemir made an assist out of it. Was it Emre? I thought it was Ömer. No, uh, they got the assist. No, no, no. Ömer uh, passed for the assist. Oh, okay. So, so the pre-assist. Yeah, pre-assist. He made the position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ömer, he's been one of the bright spots this season for Galt's, right? And, and who yeah. would have thought that, uh, that, that he would be one of the highlights so far in the season for, for Galt's, right? Kind of, like, is that maybe a sign of... Poverty, Protect. so to speak. <laughs> what? But, but a w big highlight, a sign of poverty, you know, that you have to look towards Omer Bayram to lift the team up. Um, but one big. But he's team... been playing good. But I yeah, cannot yeah. say that. Yeah, we can rely on him because he's one of the dynamic and eager players who wants to win the game instead of those uh, just all these players. Yeah, Adam Buke also started this match. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, I really liked his efforts as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but Adam, unfortunately, uh, we lost uh, Florian Andone for yeah. two and a half months uh, during the game yeah. after his uh, one of the knee things going bad uh, on his right knee. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's been out for three and a half months. Two and a half months. Yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but then the question is, of course, uh, what's the deal with Radama Falcao? Is he going to be fit after the international break? Otherwise, Galtzrai are without a striker and we'll probably be seeing uh, Ryan Babel in that position. If we're going to continue playing 3-5-2, we're going to see Adam and Babel up front, I believe. Uh, and just Feguli behind them. And mm -hmm. this game, Feguli didn't play as a winger, but a number 10, more kind of like... Maestro behind the two. Because Belhanda and was out too for this match. I don't know why he kept Belhanda out, but... He I... was injured, I believe. He got injured. Yeah, 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 I think so. And Pegli actually played really well in the central position because he's like old for the winger kind of position right now and he couldn't run for his life because he's just slow. He's like 29 or 30 years old. Yeah, but he's just so slow. Hmm. And couldn't catch the ball when it's like uh, passed into him, and he just uh, because of that he just wants the ball to his feet uh, instead of running uh, behind the defenses. Uh, okay. th yeah, that um, affects our play really bad. And, uh, and any other uh, things you take away from this win? Uh, do you think this is the start of the turnaround for Galatasaray this season, or uh, is it gonna? Yeah, be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, we couldn't say it's a uh, bad. Uh, like a uh, good win because we can't say that uh, we're gonna judge the team based on this game only because Gaziantep is a bad team as we've seen from the game. I don't really agree with that though. I really have liked Gaziantep in like seven games already this season. So to say that they're a bad team, I, I don't agree yeah, with that. But they didn't show pretty much in this game and no, in this in this match they didn't. They did. They never really perform and then we saw the same thing against Fenerbahce early on in the first match of the season but you know they were like two or three nil down after 20 minutes so that takes a team out of it but uh so that's what that was kind of understandable here though I mean I, I really expected more from them uh, given for what I've seen from them already this can, season if we can state anything for this game we saw that uh, the bench players who are eager done pretty good for the game and but but the weird thing is usually especially in home games the players from clubs like Gaziantep, like Konya, like whatever, they're really hungry to show themselves against the Besiktas of Fenerbahce, Galatasaray, Trabzonspor, especially in these home matches. And I didn't see any of that in this match. Like, uh, Tumasi wasn't involved at all. Uh, Coyote had, like, one... <laughs> Coyote just was Coyote again. I, like, we've I only known the... him for a couple of months, but he's such a such a dumbass. Like, <laughs> trying yeah, to yeah, I think him. the best player for Gaziantep this game was Julovoji. Uh, yeah. the well, midfielder been consistent defender, I think he's yeah. left footed and I I seen him delivering too many good long passes and like mm -hmm. changing the play side over and over and 
that's a great thing for a player. But uh, the thing with Gatstra is like making the team, the starting lineup, younger than ever. Uh, like benefit the team in a good way. With a, uh, also help the olders. Mm-hmm. Cover... But to talk a little bit about that, uh, Umut, we saw this uh, midweek, of course, the senior team losing to Real Madrid, but the the the, the young team in the in the UEFA Youth League, they actually won away at Real Madrid, and uh, Yunus Akun, I believe his name is, uh, the young town for the Galatasaray has, he scored a goal in that match too, and why aren't these guys getting any chances? I don't know, because I think Terim doesn't believe that they're ready anymore, like... Yeah, I know that it was Terim that brought them to the team. Uh, like he individually uh, seen them and uh, transferred them each uh, at a single time, and he's been training uh, with them ever since. But I don't know why the hell Terim does not give them a chance. Uh, maybe they're like not really physically or I don't know mentally, but. If there's no Belhanda, we could be playing with Atalai. But in a match like this, where you're two 0 up at halftime, where your opponent really doesn't look all that interested in getting back into the match anyway, why don't you just let a Yunus Agun play the last thirty minutes or something? Uh, I think this is the one of the things that Antep is a like a rough team and like they play dirty. Uh, yeah, because I, we've seen that. Is that uh, an excuse not to play? Uh, yeah, but a like, young player. Yeah. He shouldn't even played them too much earlier, like a year ago, like so that they would be ready for this time. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, anything else uh, to add, Jakub? Maybe uh, any notes on uh, this match? Um, yeah, not not a lot. Um, I thought it was really weird to see the stand so empty. You know, hmm. uh, for for a for a team like Gaziantep to play against one of the biggest teams in Turkey and have the stands be so empty. It, it was kind of weird because normally when uh, when a big four team goes uh, goes uh, to a away game, the stands are full to see the players. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that was that was really weird to me. And um, yeah, for the for, for the rest, you you guys pretty much summed it up. I really like Figuli in this match. He could have had an hat trick, but uh, like once he hit the post and uh, once he was unfortunate and couldn't hit the ball or something, I thought. Um, otherwise. Yeah, not not too much to add. Um, it's weird to see uh, Galstray play with you know um, if they they don't have you know bad players, but uh, but if you look at the at the starting squad, you think like it it isn't correct, you know, because if you if you think about the players that they have and you have you know Emre Buk in, in, in as a forward, and you know the the, the the layout seems so wrong, but mm-hmm. they are all you know good players and. Having players like uh, Siri on the bank, uh, on the uh, um, as as a sub, you know, and Zonzi as a sub, you know, it, it's really weird to see. It's it's nice for them to um, to make their minutes and um, you know get um, get the three points, but it's really weird to see a team like Galatasaray go through a rough patch after you know all the all the all the fanfare you know in the start of the season with uh, with all the players that they got. But only two points behind the leaders, so. Yeah, the, the the you know you can't say you can't say a lot because the league this year is really really great. I really love it, and I I like that uh, the point difference between like the first and the fifth or something is like two points. So they you know I don't know if it's if it's because they are doing bad or everything everybody is doing bad or everybody is good, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's but uh... it's um it's it's nice to see that the point difference isn't that big. You know, it's it's, it's yeah, nice I to have some bad. I'm also surprised that Gals are suffering this much has the same amount of points than Alanya. Like yep. it's mm. super surprising. Mm. But Alanya dropped a lot of points in recent weeks. Yeah. Uh, last four or five games they've dropped just a, a shit ton of points, despite not playing very bad. But I mean Alanya at the end of the day it's still just Alanya, it's still little old Alanya <laughs> that we're saying that even is, is kind of uh, mind boggling. Uh, that's oh Gals are oh, still have the same amount of points as Alanya, but <laughs> It's Alanya. Uh, anyway, let's uh, move on to Sunday. We were talking about the post just now, I believe, with uh, Sofian Figuri. So, Gustepe Malatya Spor is another match where the post played a role. Um, Gustepe here uh, getting the lead 
in the ninth minute through Serdar Gurler looked on the edge of offside, but uh, VAR checked it and it was okay. And then in the 83rd minute, Gokhan Torres scored from a penalty uh, to make it 1-1. And then a little bit after, uh, Gokhan Torres almost snatches the win from Alatia Spor after pretty much Gustepe dominated the entire match pretty much. Um, but Gokhan almost snatches the win, hits both bars... And uh, then I believe the goalkeeper saves it. So, yeah, um, Gustepe probably kicking themselves not to get three points here. But at the end, they are probably happy that they didn't lose. Because uh, Malatya almost snatched it towards the end of the match here. Um, yeah, Gustepe, they're doing okay now, right? I mean, they're kind of nestled themselves a little bit in the middle of the table. Um, I believe they're on 13 points now. Uh, so yeah. it's, a, it's like three points above the relegation zone for the moment, but again here a match at home, not really home, but still, uh, that they should have really won, I think, based on the amount of chances that either team had. Yeah, Kamara um, and Jerome, there's too many sitters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and uh, Faunol played a good game again for Malatia Spor, but Malatia defensively not looking too shabby here. Uh, like they kind of that's also been their weakness throughout the season. I feel like they're a decent offensive team, one of the highest scoring teams in the league, uh, but defensively they're just very prone. And I don't know if that's down to just the quality of the players at the back. I do think that they do lack some quality there. Or if it's maybe down to also the, the, the tactical organization of the coach, what type of football he p- tries to play. And maybe he just, you know, for the football he wants to play, he needs a little bit better quality at the back. Because if you look at what he has uh, in his, his back positions, uh, I think I talked about earlier this season, Erkan Ka- Kash, um, not exactly a, a great player. And then on the other side, he has, uh, what's it, the, the guy's name? He's, he's super bad. Um, the The... African guy. No, I think he's maybe Moroccan or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. The, the captain. Chebak. Oh, Chebake. yeah. Ch- yeah Chebake. Ch- Chebake, yeah. He's, yeah. So bad. he's so bad. Yeah. Oh, I got so annoyed by him in the Europa League. Oh, his crosses. But maybe that's just me. It, it was like shades of Roberto Hilbert for me, where every single cross <laughs> was just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and everyone that I, all my friends were British fans, they're like, oh, Hilbert, I loved Hilbert. And I was like, oh, no, I hated him. I mean, I don't hate him, but I hated, you know, the type of player he was. Like, every single person. He wasn't cross. even a right back at the time for, well, like. Well, he, when he broke beginning. through at, at Stuttgart, he was a right winger. and Yeah, uh, yeah. Then uh, I think it was Arturo Salam who mm-hmm. changed I think so, him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. was it was it Ertel? Wait, no, he came in in 2010, so that wasn't Ertel Salam. So it was uh, Schuster. Must have been Schuster. No, must have been Schuster. Bayern Schuster. Bayern Schuster. Okay. Mm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> anything to add here, guys? Gustepe kicking themselves probably after. I think uh, there's a position where uh, Serdar Güllar passes a defender. I think it's Mustafa Akbash, mm. uh, and then after being passed by Serdar Güllar, Mustafa Akbash just lays himself into the ground and just referee gives the Malatya Sport a freak again. I hate this kind of Turkish football mentality because there's nothing Sardar could have done to the defender after passing him because he has nothing to do with him. He just passed him and he's in front of goal. But the defender just uh, lays on the ground and begging for a foul call mm-hmm. and he gets it. And I hate it. Like... This is the thing that like uh, decreases the quality of the game in Turkish football because yeah, you don't I, want I, to I, see yeah. these. Yeah. I remember, I don't remember which game it was, but Ersan used to do that when he was a bishtish. Like he like a little bit of contact from the striker mm-hmm. and he'd lay down, and then you expect to get the. Free- this is a different position. Of you course, you you cause... you remember that uh, kind of Sadar Kurtulis position with Bruma, which uh, Bruma assisted the goal to Drogba. I remember the goal, but I don't remember. Yeah, Sardar. yeah, that was the uh, Sardar Kurtulish at the right back, uh, like shielding the ball for uh, Bruma, and then Bruma got the ball, and Sardar was on the ground, like begging for a fall call, but Bruma just passed it to Drogba for a goal, and at the time, and 
Right. You know, I, I, I get it if you lose the ball as a defender that you're going to try that to maybe get the call. But what I, I don't get it when you're, as a defender, like with, with the, the Ersan position I'm thinking of, he was like, he was getting the ball. And then he feels like a little bit of contact and he goes down thinking, oh, the referee's got to give this. And then the ref didn't and the also, guy goes on and scores. Also, one of the main things I can say is that before uh, Malatya's penalty call, like it was... Seven players uh, like shouting around the referee and just left the game, left playing the game, and mm. just around. Yeah. The, it was on play. The ball is on play. Just and what keep did you on think going. About, what did you think about that penalty, by the way? Yeah, it was too close. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I know he's not in a natural position, but there's no chance he will avoid it. Like, mm. yeah, I know it hit it onto his hands. Yeah, but the ball was not even going to the goal. Yeah, I think it was really harsh. I don't know what you think, Jakub, but I was watching it and I was like, ah, "This." I, mean, I, I guess the new rules you have to give it, but for me, yeah, that wasn't it, really a pen. For it me, clearly, yeah. clearly hit his arm, but as 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 Ubud says, it doesn't really go to the goal. But and I don't he heads know if it down. Can, yeah, I don't know if you can judge it that way. You know, when it's hap- when it's happening in the box. Yeah, no. after seeing what referee didn't give in Premier League after the ball hitting twice the Trent Arnold hand in a Man City game against Liverpool, mm. I think this can be in the same case. Uh, this can be seen in the same case. Uh, but yeah. I hate when players like shouting and uh, begging for a call for their side. At yeah, the game when keep the ball playing is and play. let far deal with it. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, the thing is though, if you don't, I have that the impression this season. If you don't shout and make a big fuss, they don't even look at shit. Yeah, I, I really mean, have that feeling. I mean, I get it from both sides. I get that. Uh, I agree with Umut and I agree with you that you know the play is the play is still going on. So don't just you know hound the ref and try to you know just scream for a penalty. But, but you also see, but you also see that when you don't do that, uh, the ref is like, ah, okay, just just keeps going, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, but you you ask for it, but not with the eight players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that, but that, uh, I wouldn't be even sad. It should just they, be the one guy concede... like Sergio Aguero running after the goal. <laughs> after no, no, no. I, it... I wouldn't be even sad, remotely sad, after they concede a goal when the hmm. seven or eight players covering the referee and nobody defend the ball afterwards. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I call it the Barcelona tactic because Barcelona <laughs> does that with like every foul and every yellow card, red card, everything. But Ooh, we, you know, we have, a, we have a Real Madrid fanboy here. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a, I'm a Barca fan, but I okay. know that they are you know annoying with that. I but, think they should be fine. It's because they're all tiny guys, so they have to do that. <laughs> I don't know about being fine, but I do also agree with Burak. You know, um, uh, with Burak. I'm sorry. Um, I do agree that just let's go to VAR. And mm-hmm. um, just just let it go to VAR, you know. The VAR is always there and should should say something you, about you it. You think that's right, <laughs> but so so often it's like ah, oh, you know. Again, I'm a huge proponent of VAR, but sometimes I wonder what the hell those guys in that that VAR room are doing. Are they like going to the toilet for a quick? Oh. Are they having like a massive dump or something at, oh, all at the same that. time? There's supposed to be like four or five guys in there, and uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll talk blind. about it in Besiktas game. When yeah, we're about. we will. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Trabzonspor, Alanya Spor. So a really big, important match here. And uh, it, it was, I think, a huge win for Trabzonspor, given the circumstances especially. Trabzonspor here getting a red card after 25 minutes for Abdul Kader Parmak. Uh, I think it was the correct call. He kind of slides through. But we've seen stuff in recent weeks that's very similar, that didn't get red cards. I think consistency is important. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it was a correct call for, for that. Uh, then uh, the penalty, the first one in the, 70, uh, the 67th minute, uh, converted by uh, Majid Hosseini. I think it was also for uh, a handball, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, very uh, kind of similar to the one in the Malatya match, but maybe a little bit more uh, evidence. But then Trabzon got another penalty um, in the 81st minute, I would want to say, because Junior Fernandez got a red card, and that one I really didn't understand. Yeah, uh, me that was a really weird I one. I think he clapped the ref. 
no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, the, the red card, but the penalty, I mean. The penalty was seen super soft. I think he had, like, a hand on the guy's back, but... No, yeah, 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 that's like, the controversial one. He, like, hit him uh, on the face, but it did. It really didn't mm. look that bad, you know? It didn't look like... Um, like that should have been a penalty, you know. Yeah. In my opinion, that shouldn't that shouldn't have been a penalty. I remember a, a position early in the season for Besiktas, I think against uh, maybe Siva Sport, a match we lost three 0 or something, where there was like this really obvious push in the back. No, it might have been last season actually. Uh, on, on I think it was on Isimat Mirin where he just got pushed on a corner like an actual proper push and didn't even go to VAR and this one this one just looked a little weird uh, so it's like the consistency needs to be there um, but the thing is Trabs on Spore sweating basically throughout also, this match uh, yeah this very hard position fun. for Jehun Gusalam being like handled strangled by the opposition yeah yeah Who's, yeah by uh, like, uh, number 22 uh, Jakub I'm sorry. Who's the uh, Trabzonspor for number twenty-two? It? Um, it should be Campi. Yeah, uh, it was Campi. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. So that's the one who is strangling Jehun. I don't know if about strangling, but he was definitely uh, kind of holding him. And uh, yeah, think... yeah, that is definitely harder than what Trabzonspor did get for a penalty. The, the second one, right? Yeah. Well, the, the first one, I wasn't. I, I was watching on the replay on on my phone, so a very small screen, so I couldn't really properly make it out. I should have actually gone back and watched it on my computer screen. But the handball on the first one, uh, I don't know, guys. Was that the correct call? You think, or was that more like the the, the Malatia one? Was it harsh or was it right? Because I think we had three of these penalties this week. We had the Fenerbahce one, which I thought was very clearly a penalty. Uh, then the Malatya Sport, which I was really eh, and then the Trapas Sport, I didn't get a proper enough look at it, I feel like. But what, would it would it be more uh, a Fenerbahce one, where it's a clear penalty, or a Malatya Sport one, where it's kind of like, hmm? In my opinion, it was a clear penalty, because the defender is really like, um, his, his his arm is like in a, in a, in a like 75 degree angle in front of him. Down the campus. Yeah, so it, it, it was a penalty because his arm was in a really weird position and um, yeah, he got the ball got hit by his arm. And this one went toward goal as well, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this one uh, was headed, yeah. to, headed okay. to goal, yeah. yeah. And there's nothing to say there, I think. The, in terms the of... thing what differentiates this handball to the Malatya position is that the this is where the ball directly hits to the defender's hand. But mm-hmm. this uh, on the other penalty... Uh, there was a ball which just directly came to a close body contact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think this can be given. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, Papi Sise with a couple of big misses. Yeah, um, he missed yeah, he two, had an two, two big chances, I think he missed. He also, he also empty net. Sp- yeah, I think he scored one as well, didn't he? Uh, offside. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, but Papi Sise, we've been saying it for weeks now, scores a lot, but also misses a lot. Uh, he kind of reminds me of a prime Burak, uh, who would get in like five positions every match and score like two goals. Yeah. You know, when he was a trap zone, <clears throat> uh, when he had like 34 goals in the season, I think he could have had 50 goals. Um but, and there's uh, one position where the Trabzon Sport mm-hmm. defender just clears off the line. Yeah, right, Novak. right. When Ujan, Ujan dropped it, right, right, right. Yeah. That was a heroic save. And if Trabzon Sport end up winning the title, they'll have to build Filip Novak a statue don't. because that, that one there, that would have won it then for them. Don't jinx it. <laughs> don't jinx it, you bitch. Hey, hey, we're only a couple of points behind. I, I have to try. <laughs> um, I, I do have, I do have like a couple of notes, um, we, which we pretty much always, uh, all already uh, talked about. Um, yeah, go ahead. In my opinion, the the red for Abdul Qadir's position shouldn't have been a red. He clearly yeah. got, he clearly does get the ball, but he also clearly fouls the guy. So it it should have been a yellow, in my opinion. It shouldn't have been a red. Um, Cisse had an awful game. To, uh, at least, you know, he, he played good. But he, as you said, a lot of positions that he should have he should have scored but didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a position in the second second half where um, second was it the second half? I don't remember exactly where um, Pereira should have gotten a second yellow card. Um, you know, I like the guy, but he's he's such a, he's such a bitch sometimes. 
you know, <laughs> I, I like him because he plays for us, I guess. He's a Portuguese guy, man. They all, they're very hot-tempered. Yeah, and there was a position um, it, uh, which almost led to a alliance for goal where he, he like, dropped someone or kicked, kicked, kicked his shin or something. And I really don't don't know how VAR didn't give like uh, talk talk about talked about that you know because he was already on a yellow. Yeah, but, but if it's, a, um, if, it's a, if it will be a second yellow, they're not gonna do anything. Ah, okay, it has okay. to be a red card offense for them to intervene. Okay, it's um, straight red. Well, otherwise, um, uh, it's finally you know nice to uh, nice to see us score a penalty again. We, we tried pretty much every player. And uh, apparently the defenders are, defenders are now the ones. Yeah, but then he misses the, the second one, so you still you still have to find a penalty yeah, taker. May, maybe we'll maybe the goalkeeper. Time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Novak, you know, uh, the the position we were talking about, where Ujan uh, just lost the ball, and uh, he 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 pretty much got the ball from just off the line. Uh, terrible, he, terrible uh, slipper by yeah. Ujan there. I, I had like. Hakan, uh, Arikan, uh, Jenkun, <laughs> and flashbacks there. And I had thing... uh, Tolga, Tolga Zinje flashbacks. <laughs> did, did oh, a lot. He it wasn't that bad with us on that. He played, he he was played like shit 10 coming years off for his us. Line. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I but remember with us, a lot more. His high balls weren't the worst thing when he was playing for us. It was just coming off his line, and his, oh, and every single time the ball would be passed back to him, it would go straight into the stands. The guy can't pass. The can't. <laughs> oh, I mean. The so nice part is gone. he had like nine bad seasons with us, and then he had one get good season, and then we <laughs> sold him to you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, and we paid yeah, like three we, million. As, as we talked, um, I, I thought the second penalty was a little soft. You know, of, of course, if the, if, if the penalty went in, I would have been happy, but um, it was it was a little it was soft, so it it, it probably shouldn't have been given, and. Um, I blame Karma for Husseini losing it. You know, not 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 kicking it in. Um, because we got something that we didn't deserve. Um, there was a there was a small uh, video online of uh, Sosa watching the game on the stands. Mm-hmm. Um, he could have gone to Argentine uh, for the opening of the new stadium of Independent. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, he, he he supposedly told Veron that he uh, that the team had a big match and he couldn't. You know, he had to watch the game. And there is a little video of him uh, on the stands during the second penalty, and he's just scared to watch the pitch and just <laughs> praise. Um, so that was kind of nice to see to see him being so invested in the team. Um, there was uh, a position uh, near the end of the game. It, I think it was pretty much the end of the game, like um, the 90, 92nd minute, where um, Alaya Sport player um, Souza, I think I don't, I, I didn't catch his name. Um, Suso? No, wait, that's, Suso. that's Milan. That's Milan. <laughs> or yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember which one it was. Wellington. But he, I don't know. He he he, he caught uh, Sirlot uh, on the head. Yeah. And uh, in my opinion, that right, that's right, a, head to head, the yeah. Yeah, in my opinion, that should have been a yellow. But uh, you know, it's the end of the game. They probably thought like what happened he went to, to the, he what went happened to the hospital, to, right? Yeah, yeah. What happened to him afterwards? And nothing. He's he's fine. It was just a pre- preliminary. Um, just to get him into the uh, hospital because he concussion got hit on the head, maybe. you know, concussion concussion protocol and stuff. But he's supposedly doing well. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, huge win eh, for against Alanya Spor. Um, not to be underestimated, uh, and especially given the circumstances of the match, I do think it was a correct call the red. But I also think there's a uh, an error inconsistency. The, the reason I feel it's a correct call is because he, his, he's got a lifted boot and, and kind of he shoots up. And I said it a couple of weeks ago with I think Vedat Muric, where I think he should have probably gotten the red card against uh, oh, who was that? I don't know, like three games ago or something, where he had a similar position where he he his leg kind of shoots uh, up and uh, makes contact with the studs above the ankle. Uh, so I, I I understand this as a red. Um, but we've seen other stuff recently that didn't get given. Um, and the, it feels like we speak about these positions every week where we just see a yellow card or nothing even at all. Um, so I think there needs to be a very clear meeting between all the referees uh, since all these <laughs> these old well, refs are getting uh, fired apparently recently. It's <laughs> like uh, yeah. the one after the other, there's a, a new generation of referees coming in. They need to be on the same line and 
you need to be a little bit more consistent. You can't give reds for this one week and then the next week not even give a yellow card for it. Or even like on the same match day for similar positions. So there needs to be more consistency in, in what you determine as a red card offense. And I mean, uh, it was definitely not uh, malevolent intent. There was no malice in the tackle, but it was a reckless challenge. So... I understand, I mean, but I would have also understood a yellow. Yeah, let me. Let me, uh, I, I. I just wanted to say, like, um, in my opinion, it was a yellow. But uh, w- I, I do agree with people that think that it's a red. I, I can't. I can't see where you're coming from. Let, let me put it like that. You know. So I'm not saying that I thought. I think it's a yellow and red is uh, the wrong decision. Um, mm. You know, but I, I can understand why people think it's a yellow, and I can understand why people think it's a red. I've seen worse things that yeah. didn't get read. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's move over to the next match then. Besiktas Ankara Gujju. This one ending two to one. Enzo Crivelli scoring a brace for Besiktas here in the tenth minute and in the seventy seventh minute. Both of them were really tap ins. Uh, the first one uh, provided to him by uh, Kaisara, Junior Kaisara, and then the second one by Edin Vischa. Both were crosses from the right hand side, and both, I believe, he tapped in at the far post. Um, but Crivelli scored quite a few of those goals this season. He's always in the right position. Uh, and it's not like that's all he does. He works hard, he combines well with other players. Uh, this is his seventh league goal. Um, but he's also scored two in Europe, of course, this week. So he's got nine goals in 14 appearances for Basakshir already. Aydin Karabalut gets a consolation goal for Ankara Gudju in the 87th minute. And then uh, there's two more chances or so for Ankara Gudju towards the end where they could have maybe gotten a point. But at the end of the day, uh, Basakshir here uh, again with a deserved victory. And despite a very poor start of the season with their first five matches really not going their way, they have really... Um, yeah, picked up the pace. Okan Buruk has righted the ship, has put the train back on track. So whatever, however you want to say it. But Bajaksha are going strong right now, and they're maybe the most consistent team in uh, the top of the table right now. Uh, we've seen everyone else slip up in recent weeks. Uh, not counting, well, Besiktas count, including Besiktas, because they slipped up against Ankara because you couldn't get the win there, uh, a team that they should always be beating. So, uh, Basakshir, one of the few teams that are, isn't really slipping up. Uh, yes, they have dropped points, but it was against uh, Alanya Spor, it was against Trabzonspor. So, that's okay, I think. Um, but Basakshir here, get a win. Crivelli on fire. I know, Umut, you're quite a fan of uh, Crivelli already. Uh, do you think that's uh, the type of striker maybe Galstrike should be going after instead? I don't know. Maybe he's just uh, shining on the system that Basak mm-hmm. has right now. But mm-hmm. I really like his play style because he's more like a helpful and supporter kind of uh, striker uh, rather than just directly like score. Umut Bulut, but, score, but more capable of converting consistently. No, no, no. no. Not kind of Umut Bulut kind of player, <laughs> but... He just like, like, he's just smart out there. Yeah. Like, yeah, knows where to. Yeah, makes good runs. Loses, makes yeah. sure to have a position inside the box, and he has decent feet as well. Uh, the remember the goal uh, in the first. I think it was first week. Yeah, the the goal Mart assisted. Uh, it was against Fenerbahce. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a really good. Yeah, goal. yeah. He just passed Jailson there with with a cool manner, with quick feet. And he has decent feet, and he just quickly thinks about and knows his surroundings really well and just supports their players and gives some passes to uh, make them, like, put them into kind of opportunities in front of goal rather than scoring. Because I don't think he's primarily thinking about his priority is, like, goal scoring, but... He just provides too many chances to his teammates up front. Yeah, and uh, we've seen also Edin Vischa really get come into his own. I mean, we've been critical of him early in the season. He really missed the start of the season. Um, but he's, yeah, picked it up again. He's back in top form. And he's been very important, very much involved in their goal scoring. Very frequently provides Crivelli with the assist. So, uh, yeah, Vischa scoring less but maybe giving some more assists this season. Uh, yeah. Although he's always he's always done a decent amount of assists too. So, yeah, Bashakshir just, uh, yeah, good win. And, um, 
they're one of those teams at the top of the table. What else can we say? Uh, Jakub, anything to add? Um, I'm ready to jump on the Crivelli bandwagon. <laughs> well, yeah, I think there's a couple of strikers that maybe are worth um, that bandwagon status, but we'll get... We'll, we'll, we'll get on it a little later uh, because it's international break, so we'll look, take a look at the top five goal scorers in the league and stuff. Um, but let's move over to the last match of the match today. Besiktas Denizli Sport, this match ending 1-0 through a uh, George Kevin Nkudu goal in the 17th minute, making his first ever goal for Besiktas. And this was a match that uh, could have been, probably should have been, a far bigger win for Besiktas. Uh, but that first goal just... It kept it stayed out too long. Um, Stakoviak had a decent game, made a couple of really good saves. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the referee, despite Bishkek getting the win, was the the highlight of this match in a negative way. Um, and usually, when we say that, it's it. I think usually. It's, he makes a mistake on one side, then he makes a mistake on the other side, he misses a penalty here, but then he also misses a penalty for the other team and stuff like that. But here it was really quite one-sided, except for maybe the Vida position, which I don't know if he could have given at least a yellow there, I don't think he gave a yellow. Um, but apart from that and the resulting free kick that Rodallega uh, took and Karius saved... There wasn't really all that much Denizli Spore uh, in this match, and it was pretty much all Besiktas. It started on really early with a penalty shout after Laich walked down the back line, and uh, I initially really thought it was a penalty, and I was like, how did they not give that? He just clearly puts his foot in front of him and tackle, well, basically porch up. Um, but then I watched the replay before we started recording, and I think he gets the ball first, and that's why I think he actually blocked the ball and that's why there's no penalty there. Otherwise, I think that's a 100% penalty. Uh, but I think he actually got the ball first. And so I understand that. Then there's another position um, where number 21 of uh, Denizli Spore plants his, yeah, plants his studs on the Achilles heel of Janner Erkin. Doesn't even get a yellow card. Um, Janner is livid, of course. Understandably so. He had a career-threatening Achilles injury like a little bit over a year ago. That's a serious thing if you've gone through that as a player in you know, yeah. his early 30s. I understand why he was pissed and he took out his frustration. Usually, Jenner's the type of guy that you know, he'll take a lot of stupid yellow cards and most of them are deserved. But this, I, f I understood him here. Uh, I understood him having a go at the linesman there. How could you not see that? I think that was a position that was worthy of a VAR control check. I think that was a potential red. Um, it was a very nasty tackle from behind. I don't really think he had a proper opportunity to get the ball. Foot was high, above the ankle. For me, that was a red card. Um, and... <laughs> The funny thing is that Janner ends up getting booked there because he had to go as a ref, uh, not at, at the linesman. Not even, uh, yeah, not even a VAR check here. Uh, then a couple of minutes later, Diaby gets uh, uh, an elbow in the face in the penalty box. Again, no VAR check. This one was a clear penalty for me. Um, the defender has no eye for the ball, just plants his arm in the face of Diaby, preventing him from getting to the ball. Even though I think if he doesn't do that, Diaby gets on the ball. So for me, that's a penalty. Uh, what else is there? Then in, in the second half, there's another penalty position again on Diaby. Um, and at the time, I was like, eh, I don't think that's a penalty. And then I watched it again uh, before we started recording. And honestly, I think it was a penalty again. Uh, and again, did not go too far. And then, of course, there is the tackle of uh, Isaac, Isaac, Saki. Isaac Saki on uh, Diaby as Gosh. well. So Diaby missed a missed, missed huge chance. Uh, Fabre Boccio crossed it in from the left. And, and uh, Diaby got to it, but uh, shot it straight at Stakoviak. So Besiktas fans will probably remember him for missing uh, a sitter at 0-0. Mm -hmm. But honestly, he was a handful for the New Sport the entire match. Could have had two penalties. Could have had a red card fall on him. Uh, had a good had a good game. How I did think referee was... not give that tackle on Diaby? Well, I, I don't understand either. But you could see afterwards he was actually listening to his earpiece, so there yeah. was communication oh. with VAR. So, I, 
you know, in this VAR era, I'm looking more at the VAR referee than I'm looking at the actual ref. For me, I said it earlier in the, in the first segment on the Europa League, you have to be 100% sure. So I do not blame the referee for not pulling a red card there. But I do blame the VAR referee for not pulling a red card. For not telling the ref, come take a look, you have to see that this is, again. But in the first sight, it is a direct red card. Like he's coming with both feet and just tackling on the standing foot of the Diaby the mm-hmm. there. And just... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think this was a match with, uh, let's see, uh, four really big decisions. I think, I don't know what you guys thought of the penalty positions. Let's first, the, the large one. Uh, going to go to both of you. Jakub, was that a penalty or not? And if yes, why? If no, why? Um, I honestly don't know. Um, how about you go to Umut and I'll just rewatch it just to be sure. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Uh Umut, what did you think of the first one, the one on Laij? Was it a penalty or not? Well, initially I thought that it was not a penalty, like just Laij dropped himself on the ground. <laughs> so you're the opposite of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but just looking in the different angle, uh, mm-hmm. the guy just uh, hit the... Like, because there are two guys uh, defending mm-hmm. Laij there, and one of them got the ball and other got Laij. So I don't know mm. what the decision will be there. Like mm. this is two way complicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I said before, initially I thought that the the guy from behind who puts his foot in front of Leitch's left uh, right foot, I thought he didn't get the ball. But I think in the replay I saw that he initially hits the ball with his heel and then trips Leitch. But for me. Then I understand why the ref didn't give a penalty. Yeah, why VAR two, didn't intervene. Number two, Tiago Lopez got the ball, but number eight, who is uh, I don't know his name, Mohamed. Yeah, but what, yeah, and, but but that guy is standing. Where can he? He can't disappear in thin air. So I don't. That's that's okay. That's not a penalty for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, the question um, for, to answer. Yeah. What What do you think? I'm I'm, I'm watching it in slow motion right now, and um, he doesn't get the ball. Uh, the number eight. Oh, okay, then it's but a penalty. He, <laughs> but he also doesn't get Leitch. It, it looks it like Leitch gets pulled down or something a little bit, or his balance is uh, disrupted. And um, yeah, you can see him just. It, it looks like he, he he drops because he knows there would there, yeah, yeah, there yeah. might be contact. He has nowhere to go. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so understandable. Yeah, this is a little bit a little, little bit difficult. So uh, it. I think that both decisions will be okay. If you gave a penalty mm-hmm. for this, I don't think people would complain. And if you don't give a penalty, ah, except except Besiktas fans, then um, <laughs> it, it shouldn't be that big of a complaint. Uh, complain, you know. Okay, let's move over to the second one then, the Diaby position, um, the one in the first half where he gets an arm in the face. Uh, Umut gonna ask you first. What did you think? Was it a penalty or not? Well, I think he just dropped really easily, like running there, and just because of the size difference that he had, mm-hmm. uh, he just wanted to use it for his side. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, I understand what you mean. He wants to influence the referee yeah, because it's I, I a big guy. I think the defender there is guy. Mustafa Yumlu, is a big guy, and mm-hmm. Diaby is a, like a midget there uh, mm-hmm. before him. So. I think he went a little easy on the floor. Yeah, he definitely goes down easy, but that arm has no place being in his face. Yeah, but no, definitely not a penalty call for me. Okay, Jakub, what did you think? Um, it, it does look like a penalty. Um, <clears throat> as, a, as a guy that was forced to watch Mustafa Jumlu play, I know that he <laughs> isn't the best defender. Um, and you can you can just clearly see that he's, he has his arm across, yes. across yeah, his he, face, you know, and... <laughs> Like almost his elbow hits his face. Um, yeah. I do agree a little bit with Umut that he does go down a, like like really yeah. quickly. But um, we also talked about how if you don't go down, the the, the refs just don't care about it. Mm. So in my opinion, I think that this should have been a penalty. Yeah, I, I agree with both of you. I think I agree with Umut. I can I can definitely see where uh, you would say that that he uh, goes down easy. But 
I think if he doesn't put his arm up there, that 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 Diaby just gets past him and gets the ball. So, for me, it's a penalty. Uh, but no, no, we can think both as like the small player wants to use his pace, but the big player wants to use his physicality there. So, like, but I, I think what we can agree uh, on is that both are kind of fifty fifties. Yeah. So VAR not interfering is understandable because VAR has to come in on a clear error, and neither are clear errors perhaps not clear enough at least on the second one um and the first one i think like jakub said you know you can give you can't give i think that's not a clear error so understandable then let's move over to that uh fall on on janer the studs on his achilles umut first uh please definitely a red no no other choice definitely a red yeah jakub um, I'm just trying to find it. Just give me a second. It's in the first, it's, it's right be, before or after the second penalty, I think. Is it is it the one where uh, where 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 uh, Janet gets where ja- yellow for complaining? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That that one's a red. That one's definitely a red. Okay. Uh, he doesn't is... he doesn't go for the ball. He he just goes he, he goes goes for the ball, but he only hits uh, his Janet. And yeah. um, there's a player in between him and the ball. I don't think he have, he has any he chance of getting it. He just shaves the no. you know like. He just shaves there, like coming from upwards to like going to down with his studs and all. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. definitely yeah, a dirty foul there. Definitely red. That's a clear error. Why does VAR not interfere? That's the question. Uh, next position is the Isaac Saki one. Uh, Umut. Uh, definitely red. No other choices. <laughs> <laughs> Jakub. Uh, the one on Diaby? Yeah. Yeah, like 100% red. Yeah, it, it, it should it, have been given at the first sight. Like, the, the, the ref shouldn't have been waiting for the war review. I mean, it could have it could have been much worse for Diaby, you know, the, the yeah. way he. And gets looking it. there, looking there, where he's in the just yeah, his leg kind of gets line. stuck. He could have been yeah. out out for the season. Looking where referee is standing for the position, he could see the position really well. Like he's just. 20, 15 minutes, uh, meters away, uh, kind of thing. He he did yeah. see it, and I don't know why he he didn't give a red. I think referees are with far. I think referees are far more inclined not to pull reds too early because they think, oh well, look, if it's if it's a red, then VAR will tell me, and if. VAR was talking to him, but then the problem is, we, of course, we can't hear what's being said. So, for me. <laughs> I but always no, go no, the to pointing is, my finger. Uh, in what game, I don't remember, this week, uh, a yellow card has been dismissed after VAR review. Like, uh, um, it, it was... Um, yeah, so but that I, was I because do... of offside uh, yeah, penalty. Yeah, that was an offside thing. Yeah. 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 It can be done from the VAR review as well, if you're given a red. Oh, was it... yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, if, if you give a red card and it's not a red card, then VAR can uh, in, indeed... So yeah, you're right. So maybe they should, but yeah, yeah. It's it's a weird. It's a weird. It can cause also contradictions as well because uh, a week ago uh, in Premier League, uh, whose leg was broken? Everton player, like uh, Gomez. Andres, Gomez. Yeah, yeah, Gomez, Gomez yeah. Uh, in the, in the team of James Cotton. Yeah, Son was given a red, but he didn't do anything at the at the position. Uh, he, he just tackled it and. The leg of the player got broken afterwards with a collision with Aurea. Yeah. Hmm. And they just removed it after the game uh, with a war view. No, hmm. but um, they removed it after uh, Tottenham uh, went to the uh, yeah went yeah to the, went to the board and you know talked yeah. talk about it. Yeah, you can. Can you, you can do that con- in Turkey? You can you can contest red. Yes, you can. Yeah, in Turkey you can contest red cards too. You can do it anywhere, but. Uh, okay, uh, then finally is the, the the third penalty position again on uh, Diaby. Um, Umut first. This is far more uh, reasonable what he did against Mustafa Yumlu. Uh, I think this is a penalty because mm. they are he both. He gets past him. Yeah, yeah, he already passed him, and he's uh, in front of goal, uh, just about just about to cross it and uh, ready for a goal. But the defender doesn't let him. Just, uh, he just uh, jumps into him. Mm-hmm. Jakub, what do you think of that? Um, I think it looks a little bit too much like the first one um, with Ljajic. 
but um, yeah, it's not one hundred percent clear no. there's context from the angle but, that we're seeing. I think. But if you if you would have to give like either the first or this one uh, a penalty, I think this one should be a penalty. And usually, you're also in a situation where, as a referee, you've denied giving two previous penalties already. You've uh, ignored two red cards, and usually, you're a little bit more inclined to give that uh, penalty in this situation. I think it was still nil nil late in the game. Um, the only thing I can say, I think, if if, if this is an away match, Besiktas don't win. They no. would drop points because of these decisions. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing that's important, I think. Of course, Besiktas win despite the referee here. Uh, so at the end of the day, there won't be that much being said about it, I think. Although it, I was surprised by how much uh, the media did talk about it afterwards. Because usually when this type of thing happens, it gets glossed over because they won. So it doesn't matter. But yeah, I think if this was away in the Nisli, I think Besiktas are lucky to get a point with these types of big decisions um, but like we said, 50-50 penalties, the third one as well maybe, but those red cards are undeniable. So big decisions, again, far, uh, no man of the law here, but I think Bulek would probably agree with you guys. Uh, so let's let's call it there, uh, Bishitesh get the three points, and that means that the standings look as follows. We have Sivaspor at the top with 21 points, Fenerbahce in second position with 20 points. Then we have multiple teams on 19 points, to be exact, Trabzonspor, Alanyaspor, Bajshakshir and Galatasaray. So third until sixth, all have 19 points. Then in seventh position, we have Malatya Spor with 18 points and Besiktas in eighth position also with 18 points. Then we have a three point drop off to ninth position where Gaziantep Football Club are. In 10th position, Riza Spor have 14 points, Gustepe in 11th with 13 points, Konya Spor in 12th also with 13 points. Um, Kasim Pasha in 13th with 12, Denizli Spore in 14th with 11 points, Antalya Spore also have 11 points in 15th position, and then we have the first team in the relegation zone against Terbali have 10 points, while Ankara Gaju in 17th position have 9, and Rock of Bottom are Kayseri Spore with 7 points. The top score in the Turkish Super League is still Papis Sise with 9 goals, but Adis Yahovic also has 9 goals to his name, but 3 of his came from the penalty spot, Sise has no penalties. Enzo Crivelli is in 3rd position with 7 goals, same amount as Vedat Muric, but he has 2 penalties, both came in, to, in this match day. And then in 5th position, we have Alexander Zerlov with six goals, one of which came from the penalty spot. Um, I think that's pretty much it for Super League. Let's quickly talk about the international break coming up because Turkey are just one point removed basically from the European Championship in 2020. Um, let's quickly look at the call-ups for the national team. So, Mert Gunok from Başakşehir, here, Altay Beyinder from Fenerbahçe, Sinan Bolat from Antwerp, and Urjan from uh, Trabzonspor, of course. Then in defense, we have Zeki Celik from Lille, Nazim Sagare from Antalya Sport, Çalak Soyuncu from Leicester City, Khan Ayhan from Düsseldorf, Meri Demiral from Juventus Ozan, Kabak from Schalke 04, Merchetin from AS Roma, Umut Merash from Le Havre, and Hassan Ali Kaldrim from Fenerbahce. In midfield, we have Cengiz Under from AS Roma, Denis Turic from Fenerbahce, Efecan Karajan from Alanya Sport. Alanya Spor, ja. Emre uh, Belozolo from Fenerbahce, Irfan Can KVG and Mahmoud Tegdemir from Başakşehir, Okay Jokuslu Yokush, from Celta de Vigo, Ozan Tufan from Fenerbahce, Yusuf Yazici from Lille, Emre Kilinc from Sivaspor, Hakan Çalanoğlu from AS Roma, and finally Ömer Bayram. <laughs> yeah, and finally Ömer Bayram from Galatasaray, the only Galatasaray player in the yeah. squad. <laughs> and then in attack, we have Burak Yilmaz from Besiktas, Cenk Tosun from Everton, and Enes Unal from 
Is he still playing for Valladolid or is he back at Villarreal actually? It should Valladolid. be Valladolid, I think. Yeah, yeah, Valladolid. Okay. Uh, so yeah, on Thursday, Turkey will face Iceland in the all-deciding match for Turkey. If Turkey gets at least a point, they are certain of qualification for the European Championship. But of course, if Turkey gets a win and gets a win on Sunday against Andorra, they won't just qualify for the Euros. They will do so as the winners of the group thanks to their head-to-head with France. So, yeah, big match on Thursday. One of the biggest in recent history for the Turkish national team. And it is, of course, against our arch-rivals of the recent years, Iceland. Um, Yeah, big game, guys. What do you expect of this? Jakob, let's start with you. Um, I'm I'm happy that uh, the the injured players are finally back. I hope that Cengiz is going to play. I really miss him. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. We're playing at home. Where where do we exactly play? I no clue. <laughs> no, I think... Eskishir, right? No, we... sure. You know, done... we, we just sure. need we just need those uh, those those dumbass fans that just don't know anything except scream all game. You know, to to put a lot of pr- pressure on the team. It says in Istanbul, maybe in Tetarana. Well, mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. It might be Vodafone, actually. Turkey. Turkey, yeah. Hadikoy, maybe. Uh, or maybe, game. maybe Olympiad. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it's not. I don't want to imagine. Telecom Arena. Yeah. So, um, it, it, the, I, I just ex, um, expect a yeah. full stadium. And, um, you know, the team is doing well. Uh, the individual players have all, all been pretty good at the moment you know and we don't have the polarizing Fenerbahce Galtzrai players that the Galtzrai fans or the Fenerbahce fans or the Besiktas fans will turn against like we had a couple of years ago with Falcon and Co so, yeah. Uh, yeah you know the, 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 the biggest the, the biggest asshole at the moment is Emre Belozola but even he is a little <laughs> bit he, he, he seems to be a little bit sim- sympathetic at the moment how how awful it, uh, it, it is to say that um, you know I'm really proud of the team the only thing that I can complain about is that the game is at you know uh, at, at six o'clock for me, and you know games like this should be a little, a little bit later. But sure. um, but in Turkey, that's already uh, seven, yeah, right? Yeah, or, I know, I know. That's, eight, that's, eight, that's just a personal gripe of me. But otherwise, it's, uh, <clears throat> the team looks really really nice. Uh, the Aday uh, the uh, the preliminary squad looks really nice. The only place where, in my opinion, we're a little bit short is in the attacking positions. Yeah. Um, Cenk, Cenk did start last weekend, but um, mm-hmm. he hasn't played a lot. Burak, you know, hasn't uh, with his yeah, injuries. It's going to be another case of Burak playing 180 minutes for Turkey and getting injured, probably. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the only thing that I'm uh, that I'm worried about. Um, I hope that uh, the players like uh, like Dervishol and Kutucu can, you know, just. Um, Play for the national team, and you know, just. But has grow. Halil already uh, picked the national team? I'm sorry. Has Halil uh, Dervishol already picked uh, Turkey, or is there he still is, on the fence? Like, there is no way that he doesn't pick Turkey, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, he's not probably gonna play. For yeah, him. but uh, th- that's the thing. I mean, I don't really understand. Like, even Enes has been with the team the entire time, and he hasn't played a single minute. I think why isn't he playing? You know, like, yeah, he's I, playing I've heard minutes. stuff. I heard, I've heard stuff about uh, the, the the like Dervishol and Kutu that they like to keep their options open, which kind of sounds dumb. But I well, do for agree. Kukchu, I understand because he's really a big talent. Yeah, he's really big. But um, yeah, I don't. I really don't understand why why NS doesn't play either. You know, he he he's more agile than Burak. You know, he can do. He's a little bit more technical than uh, Burak. It's not really difficult to be a little bit more technical than him. When when Burak isn't in form, he's why awful. isn't NS getting? time you know yeah. and that's the thing so yeah let's hope for 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 a win i mean it would be huge if turkey beat iceland of course and then take that momentum and and then beat andorra hopefully uh and win the group mm-hmm. but in, <laughs> maybe in uh, two weeks time when we are uh, when we're recording for the next uh post super league ma- uh podcast we'll be talking about the nightmare yeah. but uh don't let's hope not it. let's let's hope not no i'm not jinxing it by saying this oh, this is don't... anti-jinx okay uh what do you think um uh, are turkey gonna pull it off and are they gonna end the group as the winners of the group or second position i definitely hope so uh, and the defensive line is so good like mm-hmm. uh, after a long time i've seen 
this quality, this kind of quality in the defensive line, like we can have Khan Ayhan, Merit Demiral, Ozan Kavak, and Chalar, who is in a top form for Leicester. And also, you've been uh, complaining about Cenk Tosun, but I think he's on form as well. For Everton, he's been scoring again, and uh, he's a starter right now. And also, he, uh, the, not the last international break, but the one before, he was really showing rust. But yeah. I think he's been picking it. Uh, thanks to these international games, he's <laughs> seemingly been picking it up a little bit. And the thing with Cenk, I mean, you know, I'm, a, I'm I, I love Cenk. I think he's a very and, uh, hard worker, but he's not the. I mean, he's not a ma- huge talent. Yeah. I mean, but. Also, Yusuf Yazici and Emre Krunch are shining for their teams, and yeah. Yusuf has been playing really well for Lille. And yeah, been... please let him start over Hakan Chalanolo, yeah. please. But I, I, <laughs> I'll bet you that Hakan starts. Yeah, that's uh, my bit. Ba- but granted, Hakan came in against France and did really well. Uh, was surprised by that, but I, I, oh, oh. I, I am. I've been a, a big Yusuf Yazici fan for. I think three years or so, ever since he made his debut uh, and started playing regularly for Traps, and I, I, I really, I really, really like him. Like, I like that type of player. Uh, plus, he, he, I also find that he's he's pretty tenacious and works pretty hard. He has some dumb tackles in it and stuff, but he he's not just a lazy ten, you know. And I really like that about him. Plus, he has good uh, set pieces and all that. He has a good shot. He, he's. A, I, I really like him. He's a creative player, and that's everything. Hakan. I feel Hakan is not. I, I. I don't understand Hakan. He's not a good playmaker. He's not creative. His passing is atrocious. The only thing he's had in the past were really good set pieces. Yeah. But he hasn't scored a free kick since 2017 or something stupid like that. So I. Pfft, I, I I just hope I I don't understand why uh, Chanel insists on Hakan. He's a he's I a think, Trabzon guy. Yeah, I think that's probably why. Uh, because he doesn't want to seem biased or what? I, I think Abdul Kadir should be into team as well. Uh, Which one? Uh, Parmak. Yeah, uh, he's also tenacious and uh, like uh, stamina kind of player. But he, we we have quite a few players in that position, I think. And I, who's he going to? Yeah, displace? but he he also can play as a right back in need, like as well as right wing. Yeah, but again, we have plenty of players who can think, play as a right back. I don't think he wants to do that with Abdul Kadir. No, I think, yeah, I think Alavi, we have Nazem, we have Al- Ozan Tufan who can play right back. Yeah, I don't think I we don't, need I him. Don't, think Nazem could handle this kind of level in football uh, because we haven't know. seen him playing for uh, national team. No, that's true, but he's consistently one of the few Antalya sport players that I mean he had a really he had a breakout season last season, but he hasn't he he's not he's not he hasn't had a drop off this season. He is still really good. Yeah. I think he he does he needs of course obviously this summer he should make a move. Um, maybe maybe to Trabzon score. Uh, they could use a, a yeah, good I younger so. right back. I would love uh, to see Nazem at Besiktas too because Douglas isn't really impressing and, and Gokhan isn't getting any younger. So I, I would love to see Nazem there too. I know I know that uh, Burak would love to see Nazem at Fenerbahce. So I, I don't know. I, I really hope the guy makes the move and, and continues his growth. I think he has a little bit of... Um, he looks a little clumsy sometimes, but he's not... It's weird. Yeah, and also he has these long, long, stealthy legs. Maybe that's it. I don't know. And also thinking about if Emre Akbaba wasn't injured, he should be in the squad as well uh, with his quality at the time. But uh, unfortunately, we're missing him and Abdul Kadir Umur as well. Uh, this yeah. kind of quality we have in the recent years but is hopefully phenomenal. Abdul Kadir... Abdul Kadir will be there at the Euros. So yeah, I, I wish, I wish, he deserves like, it. Yeah, I, I really hope that Yusuf gets the start and that he gets the goal and that he becomes ungoddamn deniable and that uh, we won't see Hakan Chalhanola ever again as the starter. Would you 10. would you favor <laughs> Emre more over Hakan Chalhanola in a national team? On the wing, definitely. Yeah, because he's always playing Hakan on the wing. Uh. <laughs> I mean, how many times have we seen Hakan play as a left winger under both Terry and Chenol? It's ridiculous. 
Ugh. The guy is slow. Why, why yeah. would you put him on the wing? Because he has supposedly has a cross in him? Ugh, <laughs> come on. No, man. No, 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 Hakan Chalanola, please. And I hope this blows up in my face and he scores a fucking hat trick against Iceland or something. Nah. Uh, because <laughs> usually, usually, because last time I, I was really shitting on him, and then of course he put in a good performance against France. So, uh, you know, I, I I don't mind it if it blows up in my in my face and Turkey ends up winning because of it, because um, it's all about me and what I think. So, you know, my opinions are that important that uh, you know it blows up in my face. <laughs> also, uh, have Just you kidding. been watching Sinan Bolat in Belgium? Yeah, yeah, he's really good. It's been really good consistently for Antwerp. He's a guys. Yeah, consistent quality in goalkeeping. At Standard, he was a he was a really good goalkeeper, and at Antwerp now again, he's a big man. He's a he's a he's a he's a personality on the pitch. He's a leader. He's somebody that he's he, he kind of in the status he has in Belgium is kind of like Volkan Demirel in his prime. Like he's an intimidating guy. Um, he, you know the type of goalkeeper that when you go one on one with him as a striker, you feel it. You feel that you're one on one with 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 with, with Sinan Bolat, with yeah, a big with a good goalkeeper, and that's something he could never. He never had that aura about him in Turkey. He was just like a like a Kaiser. He was kind of like clumsy sometimes. He conceded some stupid goals and a very unlucky spell at, at Galatasaray. And it's really weird. He was unrecognizable in, in Turkey. And therefore, I, I, I feel like uh, Turkish fans have a very different uh, image of, of Sinan Bolat. They see him as that kind of flimsy goalkeeper for Kayseri Spore uh, that that didn't do shit at Galatasaray and, and they still think of him like that but when yeah, you see him I in Belgium yeah I couldn't sympathize yeah. him because of the performance he showed when he was at Galatasaray hmm. and he is a, one of the main actors the one of the best goals I've seen live from Aaron Ramsey <laughs> have you do you remember that goal from 40 yards out like, yeah the, what the wonderful yeah. strike that was yeah I only remember his Champions League goal for uh, Heather, yeah, <laughs> for Tandar, yeah, uh, against Twente, I think. I don't know. It um, was in Braga at the time. Was it? Wait, no, and he was playing for Standard. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Was it against, was it against? I think it was against Twente, but it, I, don't it, know. Yeah, I, I do think it was against a, Tur- uh, a Dutch team. They had that. Sorry. Ah, uh, that's possible. What was 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 that in the Champions League? Yeah, good <laughs> old times. Oh wow! This was like fucking. I'm sorry. This was nine. Oh, years was that ago. when they won the league? Yeah, it was nine years ago. Uh, like the uh, times of Miroslav Stoch. Stan uh, Hudgens. Um, I think that was the time with uh, with Theo Janssen, wasn't it? Mm, no, that was Twente. Oh yeah, okay. The, the answer was Twente. Yeah, it was the team with. Uh, Hey, who's the Dutchman here, guy? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I I only care about uh, about Feyenoord, and I don't, you know, that was a team mm. where they had they had Dembele, they had Jermaine Lenz, Alhamdoui. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, good very, team. Very, very good team. Very good team. And Stan Um Anyway, I think that'll do it uh, for yeah. what's offers hers against Twente. Uh, anyway, uh, that'll do it. Uh, I think for this episode of Football All uh, uh Jakub and Umut, thank you very much for joining us and uh, having a very fun, uh, relaxed conversation. I think it was a little bit different than we usually do, but I hope you enjoyed it, listeners. Uh, please go and check out, um, yeah. Uzer's appearance on TRT World. Uh, I hope we can get a video of that up. Uh, but that's two weeks in a row now that TRT have called on Umut, uh, Uzer to uh, to have a say on Galtry last week, and I think now on the national team. So, um, yeah, football all Turka, the stepping stone to greatness for our hosts. Uh, so maybe one of you guys will be next. Uh, maybe uh, we'll see Jakub on, uh, on on Fox Sports NL or something soon. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. I, I, <laughs> I need to make some social media accounts so people can talk shit with me. Exactly. Get on Twitter, uh, not just that burner account you have yeah. to swear at referees. Um, but yeah, thank you all for <laughs> listening to Football a la Turca. Please go and subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already and leave us a comment or review or whatever. If you're listening on YouTube, that's great. But please go and check us out on a podcast app. It's so much easier. Um, yeah, and thank you. And we'll see you again probably 
maybe during an international break. I'm not making any promises because last time I <laughs> made that promise and it didn't happen. So maybe during an international break, but definitely once uh, match day 12 uh, is behind us. So we have more Super League football to talk about. Uh, for me, Kamba, is it thank you and good night, guys. Good night. Bid them adieu. Adios. See you next time, everybody. Bye.